The number one treatment objectives in fecal sludge management is always protection of public health, through protecting people from pathogens that make them sick. In this module, we'll introduce you to two treatment technologies that can achieve high levels of pathogen inactivation, ammonia and Lyme treatment. Following this module, you will be able to explain how pathogens inactivation occurs in ammonia and Lyme treatment, discuss operation and maintenance requirements of these technologies and considerations for the implementation. Ammonia treatment for pathogen inactivation in fecal sludge is currently in the research and development phase. Ammonia treatment relies on the toxicity of ammonia to pathogens. Ammonia can be added to the feces in the form of urea. But this treatment technology is really interesting because ammonia can also be provided through the urea that is included in urine. Nitrogen in urine is in the form of urea, but which is converted to ammonia by the urease enzyme that is available throughout the environment. Ammonium nitrogen and ammonia nitrogen are in equilibrium with each other. This graph shows the fraction of nitrogen that is available as ammonia as a function of pH and temperature. As shown in this graph, by increasing the pH, for example by the addition of lime or ash, the ammonia nitrogen concentration can be increased. At a pH below 8.5, a mixture of urine and feces will still have a low ammonia concentration for pathogen inactivation. At this pH, most of the nitrogen is in the form of ammonia that is not harmful for pathogens. An increase in temperature also increases ammonia concentrations. Next to the toxicity of ammonia, the high pH is also an additional mechanism for pathogen inactivation in an ammonia treatment. Fecal sludge collected from septic tanks and pit latrine is mostly water, which dilutes the ammonia and results in low concentrations to be available for pathogen inactivation, even at an elevated pH. Loss of ammonia and ammonium that are volatile through open manholes in septic tanks or drop holes in pit latrines also reduce the concentration of ammonia available for pathogen inactivation. In contrast to this type of sludge, high levels of pathogen inactivation could be feasible with feces and urine when we limit the amount of flush water and we are in sealed tanks. In laboratory experiments in Sweden at 20 degrees centigrade and a pH of 9, ammonia treatment could inactivate 99% of Ascaris X, which is a common helmet egg, in only 24 days. A decrease in the temperature and an increase in flush water increase this duration for the same level of pathogen inactivation from several weeks to several months. So moving from the laboratory, how could these results be used in practice? One attempt is a safe slud project that is based on collection of feces and urine without any flush water. In the first step, feces and urine are mixed together with a contact time of 4 hours to convert urea with the enzyme urease into ammonium. Following a material that increases the pH, such as lime and ash, is added which converts ammonium into ammonia. Then this is kept for hours or days for inactivation of pathogens. It is important to convert a urea into ammonium before increasing the pH, as an increase in pH inhibits the enzyme urease. In the laboratory experiments in the United States, 99% of Oscar's X were inactivated through this process. Such a treatment process could be implemented for pathogen inactivation in innovative on-site sanitation technologies or for treatment following separate collection of feces and urine, as shown here with these jerry cans for urine collection and a tank for storage in Bolivia. Lime treatment, which is also called alkaline treatment, is a common treatment technology for wastewater sludge, but also has been implemented full-scale for fecal sludge, for example, for the treatment of septic tank sludge in the United States or in the Philippines. Lime is a fine white powder. Based on available literature of wastewater sludge, the most common form of lime that is used in lime treatment is hydrated lime or calcium hydroxide. In lime treatment, sufficient amounts of lime are added to the fecal sludge to increase the pH to 12 for several hours to month. Such a high pH slows down or stops biological processes that are responsible for odors and inactivates pathogens. As discussed before for ammonia treatment, the increase in pH also results in the increase of ammonia concentrations that can contribute to further pathogen inactivation. Lime can be added both to the liquid sludge and also sludge following the watering. Addition of lime to more liquid fecal sludge has the added benefit that it could improve solid liquid separation processes. During laboratory research that we conducted together with our research partners in Dhaka, lime improved the watering by 90 to 95 percent compared to an untreated control without lime. This can reduce the time and space required for dewatering, for example on unplanted drying beds. 
The dosage of Lyme to adequately raise the pH is an important design and operational parameter for Lyme treatment. The average dosage of several Lyme treatment applications in the United States with septic tank sludge and also application in the Philippines was 20% Lyme per dry mass of sludge. In one study in Blantyre, Malawi, addition to 20 to 35% Lyme per dry mass of sludge was successful in increasing the pH to 12. As Lyme is dosed as a function of total solids, and they can be variable, and also the chemical characteristics of sludge can be variable that influence Lyme treatment, it is always important to determine the required dosage based on the local sludge characteristics. This can be done by simple bench and pilot scale experiments where different amounts of lime are added to fecal sludge, as shown here in the Philippines. Following mixing of the lime at the fecal sludge, the pH can be monitored over time with an handheld pH meter. This picture shows an example of lime treatment of septic tank fecal sludge in the Philippines. The workers are adding lime in a mixing tank to the fecal sludge in a powder form or as a slurry prepared with water. Lime is highly corrosive for infrastructure and equipment and personal protective equipment such as safety goggles, boots, long sleeve clothes and face masks should always be worn. This is because the same process that increase the pH in fecal sludge also increase the pH at moist surfaces at humans, such as the skin, eyes and lungs. Following addition of lime, thorough mixing is required to ensure contact of fecal sludge with lime. As shown in this picture, this can be done manually, but mechanical mixing can be more effective and has the potential to produce higher pH values at the same lime dosage. So how effective is lime treatment in the inactivation of pathogens? In one study in Blantyre and in another study in Phnom Penh, Cambodia, addition of lime reduced E. coli concentrations below the limits recommended by the World Health Organization for use in agriculture. However, knowledge from lime treatment of wastewater sludge suggests that because helminth eggs are more persistent than bacteria, treatment may require longer storage durations at a high pH. Also, the effectiveness of pathogen inactivation will depend on the type of pathogen and the initial concentration of pathogens in the local context. It is always important to assess the inactivation of pathogens as a function of pH and time for the local context. Wrong assumptions can have a severe public health impact. Lime treatment has the benefit that is relatively quick, robust, and effective for pathogen inactivation. It also has a small treatment footprint. All of these characteristics also make it suitable for emergent situation. However, it is important to consider these benefits and balance them with the operating cost, which are mainly purchase of the lime. Prices for lime can vary considerably between countries. For example, in the Philippines, of price of 150 to 100 US dollar per ton, in Senegal of 250 US dollar per ton, and in Malawi of 800 US dollars per ton has been reported in the literature. Lime treatment inhibits biological processes and is harmful for pathogens by increasing the pH. It is important to consider that these processes can only be temporary and pathogen regrowth might occur if the pH drops below 11, for example during storage, transport or use of the treatment product. Pathogen inactivation only remains safe at a pH of 12. Another important consideration is that lime treatment does not reduce the sludge volume, as for example antibiotic digestion. In contrast, the addition of lime increases the mass of sludge that needs to be managed and disposed. It is also important to consider the characteristics of the sludge following lime treatment, as they can influence subsequent treatment steps and resource recovery. Co-composting, for example, is based on microorganisms that are inhibited by lime treatment and the high pH following lime treatment may not be beneficial for all soils. Lime is also inorganic and therefore does not contribute to the fuel value, which means that lime treatment uses the energy value for energy recovery through solid fuels. In this module, we introduce you to lime and ammonia treatment that are two technologies for pathogen inactivation. In both treatment technologies, the toxicity of ammonia and nitrogen and a high pH are the main mechanisms for pathogen inactivation. The effectiveness of these technologies for pathogen inactivation will depend on the type of concentration of pathogens, the dosage of lime and ammonia required to produce environments that are toxic to pathogens, and the contact time. For long-term operation of these treatments, it is important to consider that both technologies rely on reliable supply of ammonia in the form of urine or urea and lime.